Okay, this is blue shuffle and E. And if you and notice I've got the capo off. And that's because some of the chords are kind of high, like we do a root fifth chord at the tenth fret, which is really a D chord. Uh, you're going B and then down. And with the capo, you might kind of hit on some guitars, you'd hit the body of the guitar, and it, it might not be real comfortable. It might be a squeeze to do that. So I would suggest no capo, and that's the way I performed it there. Now this one is a lot like the, the um, uh, straight rock and blues riff that we did that was... But that was straight eighth notes, one and two and three, and here we're going one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. And the riff's a little different, like the last two notes kind of come, instead of hitting the same note twice, comes back to the string. And I should talk about that a little bit. You want to have kind of a touch sensitivity with your left hand. And when you do that, um, like if you look at the last, the third and fourth beats of the first measure, where you're going five, five, seven, five. Now, when I go from the fifth fret of the fifth string to the seventh fret of the sixth string, I don't take my first finger off, but I'm relaxing the pressure. It's still on there, and actually my third finger is touching the fifth string, so even if I took it off, it'd be muted dead anyway. So, and that's okay if your third finger touches the fifth string, because we don't need to hear them ringing together like a chord. So don't feel like you've got to have them both ringing together. But you want to learn to, you know, instead of doing this, you don't want to take it off. Now, I would have to take the third finger off to go back to this one. I wouldn't keep the third finger going, because then it could choke that string. So sometimes you don't take fingers off when you're going from, say, fifth to the sixth string. You wouldn't take your first finger off, but you would need to take your third finger off going back. And that goes back to that um, um, shuffle boogie thing that we did, or went like, sorry, I'm not playing it very well, but remember that one. You wouldn't hold the third finger when you go to that fifth string, because it could choke it. So you would take the third finger off, but when you're going back, you don't have to take the first finger off to go from fifth to the sixth string. So what works one way as far as taking fingers off doesn't work the same the other way. And it's kind of a subtle thing. I hope you were following me on that. So when you go from the first finger to the third finger, you don't have to take the first finger off, but you do have to take the third finger off to go back to that first finger when going from the fifth and the sixth string. Just to summarize that, that is a tricky, kind of a subtle thing. And, um, you know, eventually you learn that just by, you know, because it doesn't sound good if you go back and you're choking that string. So you want, and also another thing that a lot of people do with this one that I don't think you don't want to do is the last note of the measure is the fifth fret of the fifth string. You don't want to hold that into the next beginning of the next measure. So you'll hear this, like if you hold it, it kind of sounds funny. It's, it, it's not terrible, but to get a clean sound uh, on the next measure, let go of that or just relax the pressure. Just relax it like, um, I'm sorry. So let me play it. Here's what not to do. It's kind of muddy, so what you want to go like, um, so if you just practice hitting that last note of the first measure to the first open string, sixth string of the next measure, but relax the pressure, like, relax. 
relaxing the pressure at the same time you're hitting that note. If you just do this with me, like four, two, three, one, two, four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, and just get a, after a while you get a touch sensitivity to where your hand just automatically does that as a reflex. And I think that's why some people will hold it, not that they think it sounds good, it's just that they don't have that touch reflex of cleanly letting it go. So that's a subtle thing. Now this one has some tricky stuff. When you get to the um, third line, at the end of the third line where you go into the chords, you'll have this five, I'm sorry, seven, five, and then a chord at seven. I would just practice this note back to the third finger first and just get that rhythm. We did a similar exercise maybe in the um, straight rock and riff. So it's like four, two, three, one. And then do this, four, two, three, one. So shift your first finger, but we're not playing the chord yet. We're just learning this shift. One thing to do, uh, lay your first finger down when you hit the fifth fret to where you're muting the other strings. That's another very subtle thing, because then when you move it up and hit the chord, if you're all bent like this and you try to flatten it as you move, that's very complicated. You can do that, but uh, it's better to just go ahead and flatten it here, and then when you move it, you're already muting. So anyway, going through a drill here, just to get into that first chord, I would do third to first finger back and forth. Do it at least three times, and then do three, one, one, where you're shifting just that first finger. Remember to mute all the other strings. And then do the chord. Just drill that. Okay. And now, once you get to that chord, you're going to have to do a big leap up to the 10th fret. hold it for the whole beat. It's not a shuffle, it's just a dotted quarter. So it rings for four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. And actually from the tenth fret down to the fifth fret is the biggest leap. It's uh, from the seventh to the tenth is really you're only going three more frets. But going down from the tenth to the fifth, you're going five frets. So, it's, um, so anyway, you're going like uh, I'll do that riff slowly. You might want to try it with me. The riff going into the chords. to that, um, that the last, the third measure to the end is just the riff. Then you really start moving, moving one fret at a time from five. We had a similar thing to that in that straight rock and riff. Here it's in a shuffle rhythm. But when you, when you hit the open string after this chord, don't take your third finger off. Use your third finger as a guide for actually the rest of the song. So you're going like, slide your third finger, and then you slide the whole chord, and then 
then your third finger comes back to seven. So it'll come back early before you hit those two. So you're going like, keep the third finger on. After you do that little climb where you're going, then you hit that. It's good to relax the pressure of the third finger because you don't still ringing you know not that you're going to hear it that much but relax it and move it early so when you hit the open string get it in the seventh fret position early so that you're ready for that chord like you might just try to go back and forth Once you get to the third fret, I mean fifth fret, that's I think the hardest chord change is that four, two, three, one. So you got to really move. It wouldn't be hard if you were going, you know, single notes, but you're doing chords. And if you're uh, a little bit sluggish, uh, and a lot of people kind of freeze on that chord for some reason. You don't want to go and then the, it's too much time. So that this third fret chord is only an eighth note. So you get right off of it and get back and you might have to practice that. Like um, instead of letting go of both fingers, that's going to be probably your re first reflex is to just let go of everything when you get that open string. Keep your third finger on, but relax the pressure and try to get it up back two frets to the seventh fret. And just practice that movement from this chord. When you hit the open string, simultaneously slide back to the seventh fret. Then you're there for the ending. Okay? Um, and that's a little tricky too, that ending. You're going O, seven, seven. It's kind of a sprung rhythm, we call that. Whereas the regular riff is O, O, seven, seven. It's like that, O, O, seven, seven. Here it's O, seven, seven. So we've left out an O, and that makes the first seven a short one. So it's sort of long, Short, long, short, long. So that's, we call that a sprung rhythm. It often happens at the end of a, a piece of music or a song where the rhythm that's set up in the regular riff, then it's it's like da, 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 da. I'm sorry, it's like da, 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 da. da. So it's, it's um, the rhythm is flipped. Kind of, and so you want to really study that last measure. Now, the way I would practice all these chord changes are going to kill you. <laughs> okay, so practice backwards. Start with the last measure and get that one down. Do it three times. Two, four, two, three, which is a shuffle beat. Four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. Four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. So I went back to the two chords that are on the fourth beat of the second to the last measure, the penultimate measure. We call that penultimate. All right. So the uh, now if we go back one more beat. And we're at the seventh fret. And remember, you're keeping your third finger on, but not pressing. Like that. So you might have to practice that a little bit, and then try to go to the end.
two frets for the most part. And then you go back to the, the second beat of the penultimate measure, and that's going to be the three chords that kind of rise up, you know. So it's like... Uh, frets it's like I'm looking at the bass notes of these chords five six seven oh five three oh if you're counting it it's two two three three two three four two three one two three two two three three two three then the next beat is easy it's just two open strings right very easy. Okay, so we got one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, four, two. So we're, we're starting at the end and we're going back a little bite at a time. And then you could try the like the, the, the whole measure before that, third measure from the end. there but I'll try it slowly so it's like one two three okay so I'm going to do the whole riff about that speed really slow three two three four two three That's a challenge. A lot of chord changes at the end, but you just want to get the motor skills down. Practice little spots if you're having trouble like that. Holding that third finger when you go through 705. You know, those kind of things, you have to get them second nature. And it's not good to lift everything all the time. The hand is dumb. Remember that. <laughs> Your hand does not have a brain in it. So don't follow something that doesn't have a brain. Don't follow what your hand wants to do. You control what your hand does. So tell your hand what you want it to do and make sure you're in control. And when you do enough repetitions, holding that third finger, you know, it's just like you're just sort of lifting your first as you sh shift, but you're keeping the third finger as a guide, it's actually easier than lifting both. Because when you lift both, then you have to find them both again, you know? And so it's, uh, you could practice a, just do a simple exercise like that, just over and over again, just keep that third finger on there as a guide finger. So again, have fun with it. It's a good riff. It's uh, 
uh, here we're starting to really starting to play some blues stuff, okay? <laughs> so have fun with it.